Guys, I want you to be one of the first to go for a ride in the new 2024 Ford Mustang. Yep, Dark Horse Edition. I'm here in New York City in Manhattan. New York Auto Show is right behind me, but I want to take you along for, on the ride with me in this new car. Let's walk around it very quickly. Uh, so a couple of things. Um, we'll tell you all about it. I've got Victor inside. Uh, he's one of the engineers on this car. Uh, and uh, we'll go on the ride and we can talk about the car because it's got a nice V8 engine. And so let's hear it now. Victor, can you start it up? Give it a couple revs. I hope your ears didn't blow out because mine did <laughs> so how about this I'm gonna take the camera I'm gonna get in with Victor and go for a ride in this new oh yes dark horse all right hey Victor what's up hey how's it going welcome thank you for having me here hey no sweat Hey, can you hold my camera just for a second? I need to uh, get my seatbelt on. <laughs> so Manhattan's probably not the best, like, curvy roads it to, to test this car. <laughs> it is not. But I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, the development of this car. Are you using classic gauges or so what kind of gauge mode are you in? Right now we're in what's called the normal mode but we have several different gauges between normal, sport, and track that gets you different, uh, different gauge appearances. So this is normal, sport, and we have different animations between each as well. Um, the sport mode will look like this. Right. And then there's also the track cluster, which looks like this. So what, what is changing in the car between some of those modes as well? So when you go from, this is a good point, when you go from normal to to sport right you get a couple different things first off the, the first thing you're going to notice is your exhaust is going to change right so going between the modes we have well starting in quiet just quiet normal sport and track right and so when you're in normal mode you get normal exhaust sport mode sport exhaust track mode, track exhaust but you can also choose to be in quiet and you can also Ooh. configure these to be so whatever mode you're in you can still configure these to be however you want so if you're at a, a track that's quiet but you're in track mode in your vehicle yeah. you can put it in quiet exhaust mode to keep yourself under the noise regulation all right which is really well, useful. well let's keep moving yeah. start i mean start moving and definite nice burble oh indeed so currently the dark horse i mean this is a kind of the new generation of the mustang right um the dark horse is kind of at the top of the performance level yeah, for the Mustangs that we have available on sale right now, the Dark Horse is the most capable uh, five-liter Mustang that uh, that we've offered and that you can get an offer for. It, indeed. Well, I think people, you know, they notice first of all, <laughs> they stop to let us buy. And you are rowing your own gears, my friend. Indeed. So <laughs> this has the Tremec six-speed manual transmission which is uh, exclusive to the Dark Horse. The GT gets the MT82 transmission from Gatrack. Yep. yep. And of course, it's uh, starting to rain here in Manhattan, so which is perfect. <laughs> and so also, if you notice, it, it rev matches on its own, right? We've got downshift rev matching that's available with uh, all of our manual V8s. So, you know, if you're like me, because I'm not, you know, a professional driver, but it makes me feel you know, like I'm in, you know, it's fun and it's, you know, easy to shift and you feel like a performance driver. Indeed. Indeed. This also has like the blue metal um, uh, trim, right? So, so not any, not just any blue metal. This on the shift knob is actually anodized titanium. Right? Uh -huh. We could have chose aluminum yeah. um, or steel, but we felt that the titanium. Um, for how special this car was, was, was the right choice for the customer. It feels good in the hand, right? And it's just it's just an awesome color and, and material to use. So there is a EcoBoost powered new Mustang. Correct. Um, there is a V8 GT. This is the Dark Horse. Um, 
and so the, of course the performance has stepped up you know 500 horsepower mm -hmm. uh, from the five liter oh interesting <laughs> he's really there's of course there's a highlander that's blocking us right now so did you work on all iterations of the new Mustang or were you focused on this one? Um, yeah, so all of the 7th gen Mustangs, the whole the whole breadth of it, right? Um, okay. Yeah, we're not limited to just one. We, we, we work them on them all. Um, so tell me a little bit about, you know, some people may not understand, so it's next generation. So tell me a little bit like about the chassis differences, you know, what has been changed from the previous Mustang? All right, well, just to start, right, the 7th generation, I mean, it, it's all new, right? Yes, there are very, a lot of learnings and lessons learned that we took from S550 and the 6th gen Mustang going into S750, uh, S650, yeah. excuse me, and where we're at now, right? But uh, but everything is all new uh, for the most part, right? And so when it comes to your chassis tuning, all of our chassis tuning has been revised across the lineup, right? I mean, we've, they're completely different vehicles uh, in a sense, and so nothing is, is quite the same. And when we talk specifically about the dark horse. I mean, there's a lot of content in here that we've never even had before. So, first off, I mean, aside from things that are you know shiny like our titanium shifter, right? When you look at the engine, right? It's the first time we've had a 500 horsepower naturally aspirated engine in any Mustang, period, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so that alone, right, is you know brand new technology that's coming into the into the car, um, right? Also, one of our big things is our brakes, right? We have six piston brakes, but this time we have six piston brakes up front, four piston brakes in the rear. Right, which is also a little first for, uh, for for Mustang, um, and not only that, we also on the dark horse have floating caliper or floating rotors, two piece rotors now. Right, two piece rotors is a, is a thing that's usually reserved for race cars, mm -hmm. right, or certain Ford performance products. Yeah. yeah. But now we're bringing that down to the to the our normal customers as well. Yeah. So also, how, how about the size of the car? Has the size of the car or the wheelbase has changed? The wheel, changed over yeah so the wheelbase hasn't changed at all that's the exact same as what we had previously but um when it, yeah and when it comes to the overall length and uh and actual size of the vehicle um it's 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 very similar to where we uh to where we left off and loop around yep So you're based in Michigan then? Uh, yep. Yeah, we're based in Michigan and uh, we were lucky enough to be uh, able to come out here and enjoy the day with you guys, taking you guys for tours. So I gotta, I gotta say, dude, um, oh, that looks like a racetrack. We've got an apex. <laughs> a little bit. Got a little bit so of an apex. We don't want to run into anybody. I think guys will be able to hear that. <laughs> so by the way, the Recaro seats were sitting in Recaros. Indeed. Yep, so these are the Recaros. Pretty comfy. Right, they've got the, um, the suede inserts that are part of the appearance package that you can get with the Dark Horse. So you get the Alcantara inserts along with the blue stitching. Um, and then on Dark Horse, which is what's unique to the Dark Horse is you also get the blue stitching throughout the, uh, the vehicle. So you see it on the steering wheel, Right, throughout the seats and also on the door trim as well. Yep. Um, blue stitching is throughout. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. So the configurator is already uh, up. So uh, for the coupes, right? So the the EcoBoost is there. I was just trying to price it out. <laughs> um, the GT, I believe, starts at around forty-one thousand before destination. So it's about forty-two plus. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Dark Horse starts at about sixty, right below sixty thousand. So. Right around sixty thousand dollars for the Dark Horse, correct? Yeah. So still, I mean, I think you're getting a lot of performance for for your dollar. I mean, you really are. If you look at, I mean, just on paper alone, I mean, versus what, where we've been to where we are now, I mean, you're getting you're getting a lot of product. And when we talk about where we were at S550, especially you know, and even Mach One to where we are now, you know, um, you know, you're getting more content, essentially, you know, a similar value. And, you know, I think it's a great uh, overall product for the customer. So then I noticed this. Yes. You have kind of a traditional handle uh, <laughs> park brake. It looks traditional, but it's far from it, right? So this is, you know, our performance park brake, um, but also known as our drift, you know, our drift handle. So, yes, you use it as a, as a parking brake, you know, to put your car in park, you know, yeah. and have a parking brake when you want it. But at the same time, when you're ready to really have some fun on the right surface, you can go into your drift fitting mode, right? And 
entered when you enter drift brake mode then your car essentially you know is able to drift a lot easier with the help of the electronic brake brake so you kind of kind of initiate a drift so to speak exactly right, right. The, the biggest difference is that the electronic park brake allows you to provide a lot more braking force to those rear those rear wheels right than you are with like your traditional hand brake Oh, we're moving. Yeah, so, he doesn't, he doesn't like that I'm but there's also line lock, launch control. Can you talk to me about some of those features? Because is there a launch control with a manual transmission as well? So, there is, right? So previously we've only had launch control for uh, for base program Mustangs on uh, on automatics, but now we also do have it on the on the manuals as well. And so you can set your RPM targets to wherever you want. So anywhere from you know, 4,000 all the way up to at least 7,000, right? And once you get into your launch mode, you'll basically put your foot on the brake, and you can put your foot, your right foot on the accelerator, left foot on the brake, and, and it'll match that rev. It'll right? match that rev, and then okay. you let your foot off of the, uh, yep, off the brake, and you're able to. Uh, and red line is uh, over 7,000. 7,500. That's that's up there. That's correct. <laughs> yes, it's it's. It's high, but um. So where's the maximum torque uh, come in and horsepower? Do you rem remember kind of where in the RPM ranges that is? Yeah, so you're gonna start to see your your peak um, horsepower right around four thousand RPM. I want to say you don't have to be exact. <laughs> I mean, just get a perception yeah, for it, right? The numbers in my in my head, but but uh, yeah, but right around four thousand RPM is where you're gonna see your peak torque and horsepower. Um, but um, if you, we haven't shared any torque curves yet. Okay. Um, and so until those come out, uh, you know. That's good. But, but I mean, uh, that's kind of yeah. one way for a naturally aspirated engine. Yeah. You could let it rev higher, right? And that's kind of where you can make that peak power. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. So, well, we allow the engine to rev higher, right? So you can make more power you know, longer throughout the rev range, right? Yeah. So you, know, you don't have a narrow band of, of power to use. You have a much broader range. Um, so when you're on a track, right, depending on which gear you're in, you're always going to be within a power band. It's going to you know allow you to go fast, right? So, which is what you want when you're on a track. Yeah. Very, very cool. And so, you know, this is, you brought a couple of cars here to New York. And um, so it's kind of a first opportunity for people like me, you know, to get in the car and kind of experience it. and. Mm -hmm. Hopefully soon we can. I'll be able to actually drive uh, with <laughs> you. Soon. I mean, and um, so that's going to be really really cool. So thank you for the opportunity. And yeah, I, I you know I love the configurability. Uh, you know I think that's where kind of newer vehicles. That's like the latest trend, I would say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where you can uh, set it up just the way you like it with the gauges and different modes. And different exhaust and also themes right correct yeah and one thing that we have that's kind of a uh, slight easter egg is if you're feeling a little classic you know and you want to change it up you can go into your fox body cluster and then yes you get an you know old school look to your uh to your gauges here very cool oh yeah very cool well victor thank you Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the experience, and hopefully the microphones didn't blow out when we were revving the engine. Hopefully but that's, not. <laughs> I think that's what the Mustang is known for. Right? Oh yeah, is Indeed. that sound? So, Indeed. Mind so. You, this is a stock system, stock exhaust, stock everything. So, this is the way yeah. you when you buy this one. This you is what it, you get. This is what you get. All right, I really appreciate it. Some of the New Yorkers are honking at us, so we gotta go. Okay. <laughs>